This is the philosophical angle, defining concepts in current media. I am your host, Chris Angle. I am the author of four books on philosophy, one of which is The Philosophical Equations of Economics. These books are available free for viewing online at www.philosophypublishing.com. Along with me are our panelists, Mark Brennan, professor at the School of Business at New York University. He is also the American editor of the Quarterly Review of London, established 1809. Welcome, Mark. Thanks, Chris. We also have with us Rick Samuelson, graduated from Yale, has an MBA from Wharton, and an MA from Tufts. He is also retired head of securities at UBS Japan. This week, the concept of uh, usage is the payroll tax cut extension, or any other tax cut for that matter. At the philosophical angle, we dare say that most people out there on a salary are happy for a payroll, a payroll tax deduction. After all, it will allow for less deductions from our payroll check, thereby allowing for an increase in take-home pay. Of course, we hear from the politician on the news that a payroll tax deduction means that the federal government will take in less into the Social Security Fund, and consequently the fund will begin to deplete precipitously. But you say, so what? The government takes in well over a trillion dollars per year. Certainly they have enough money to cover it. Well, they do but it is difficult for the politician to reallocate. They just want more to spend. So cutting taxes helps them to not increase their rate of spending. Is this good? Let's explore. In the free market process, information is exchanged and priorities are adjusted, which is manifested in the price, allowing the rewards to be equalized, which will permit an exchange to be consummated. And that is, we make sacrifices to obtain a reward in everything we do. We expend our time, our effort, and sometimes our material while using our knowledge amidst a miasma of risk to gain a reward. Hence, our sacrifice equals our reward. What happens if somebody like a government comes along and takes some of that reward away? You have less reward to give yourself and use it as you see fit. So a tax cut is good for the individual. But what about the economy as a whole? Does government taxation debilitate an economy? The answer is emphatically yes. Here's why. The underlying cause of government, of government's inefficiency in its programs is the mismanagement of the interplay between the free will and the information and knowledge which our priorities are of prime importance. In the case of the public sector and in the governmentally owned corporations and programs throughout the world, the proper flow of the information, knowledge, and the priorities are interdicted by politics. So you ask, what is this proper flow of information to which you refer? Well, in all of life, information has a natural flow, and it flows to the dictum of cooperative relevancy. That is, information is directed by the consciousness to the appropriate area within a life-embodied organization where the information has pertinence. In the case of an animal's body, the cell retains that information and knowledge that it needs to function and adhere to its purpose. Any information extraneous to its singular purposes is passed on to appropriate places outside of it. If it is information that is vital or consequential to the rest of the body, it will be passed to the areas affected or ultimately to the brain when further or general considerations are needed. All life that requires cooperation will structure a system of informational cooperative relevancy. 
Consequently, LICE group entities have constructed informational systems that distribute information according to this principle. The information is distributed to the appropriate place in the group where it will be used to the greatest and most efficient advantage. This informational dissemination system must be present in any corporate situation, whether it is a single biological being or a societal confluence of many entities gathering together to attest to attain a purpose that will promote its survival and take it up away from misery. A governmentally owned corporation or program, unfortunately, cannot set up an efficient informational flow according to this cooperative relevance. A governmental corporation or program does not operate efficiently because the information is interrupted by politicos. Their purpose may be wide and varied as dictated by their various constituents. In other words, by the special interest groups. The reason is that a nationally owned governmental program is readily saddled with purposes that are politically expedient and outside the purpose of the private economic corporation or other life entity. The proprietary information of a private company would flow generally from its work groups upward toward management and then back down in an informational symbiosis. The public governmental program would have additional directives coming from self-promoting corporate issues, coming from the agendas of the politicians beholden to special interest groups, overriding and interdicting that which evolves naturally within the economic animal. The politicians would have dual interests on the public, on the public governmental program. They would, have, they would have not only the interest of the program for all of the U.S. citizens, but also as a member of the government and as a representative of their constituents. They would have their concentrated, singular, political interests in mind of the special interest groups. This will present often a conflict. In conclusion, the government det detracts by taxation when it uses its funds for governmental corporations, programs, entitlements, or other inefficiencies. Let's take our weekly government special interest waste snippet as noted by the Citizens Against Government Waste. The government spent $4.8 million for wood utilization research in 11 states as requested by 13 senators and 10 representatives. For comment on this, let's go to our panel. Mark, I'd like to start with you first. Chris, I thought we were talking about the payroll tax today. Your introduction had nothing to do with the payroll tax. I, uh, I have two questions. Go ahead. First of all, what is a governmental corporation? Oh, something like the post office, Medicare, Medicaid. Okay, that, that, that's not that's not a corporation. And to add those two words together is just to create nonsense. And then you also said in your introduction that in a free market, sacrifice equals reward. That's far from an axiomatic statement. That's just nonsense, Chris. Everything you do in life, you sacrifice your time, your effort in order to obtain something. Every single decision in your entire life is such. That's right. You don't necessarily get a reward for it. But your aim is to get a reward for it, because of risk. Not it, only it might be unless you're, it might be unless you're acting altruistically. But I thought again, I thought we were talking about the payroll tax. I have no idea what this intro was about. Or are we talking about the payroll tax? We are. We're talking about okay. the payroll tax and it as an example of government taxation. Well, okay. So we have this irrelevant intro. So what should we discuss about the payroll tax? Uh, is it an efficient? Is it uh, good for America and for good for the economy and the individuals uh, that will receive a payroll tax? So, are you asking is the Social Security system good for America? Uh, no, um, that's almost a separate situation, but it can be included because you can also I mean, then that, go that's from where pay, that's where payroll taxes go. That's payroll right. Payroll taxes go to fund Social Security. So, why are you separating them? Well, uh, there is one 
the one question is whether a deduction from payroll tax from your check increases the amount that you can spend and therefore uh, uh, enhances the economy. The second question is yours, whether it goes into uh, the Social Security Fund and whether that by itself is an efficient operation. Almost okay, so the first question is, the first question is, does Keynesianism work? And we battered that around a couple weeks ago and decided that it's horrible. And the second question is, is Social Security a good thing or a bad thing? And uh, I bet there's not going to be much disagreement on that. It's one of the worst pieces of legislation in American history. Okay, and then how would you rectify either question here? What do you suggest? Well, uh, again, I don't want to batter around the Keynesian nonsense again. But uh, I think in the case of Social Security and whether we should extend the payroll tax, my solution for Social Security is end it, don't mend it. Okay. So one thing you might do, one thing you might do is everyone right now who is receiving Social Security benefits or about to, you can take the net present value of what he is quote unquote owed uh, because he got suckered into this system and give him the net present value of his future payments. If somebody dies very shortly thereafter, he hits home run. If he lives long, uh, he's going to have to make that last. So people could take that amount of money and go and buy annuities. But, you know, that, that would just end the system. My system for retirement savings, it's called taking a little bit out of your paycheck each month and then sticking it in a savings account. Uh, when you look at the first person who got paid out of Social Security, Ida Mae Fuller, she paid in $24.75 into the system. By the time she died, she was the first recipient in 1940. By the time she died at the age of 100, she had received over $23,000 on her $24 investment. What a return. She's better than Soros, Julian Robertson. You name, you name the big money manager, she's better than all of them put together. <laughs> Very interesting. Rick? But that, that, that's, that's oh, the sorry. least of the problems with Social Security. I'm sorry. Did I, uh, if I cut you off, go ahead. No, just gonna, before I steal any more time, that's the least of the problems with Social Security. The social problems it causes are infinitely worse. Uh, that's an interesting point. So let's give Rick a little chance here, and then I'd like to come back to that very point about the social problems that it causes. Rick? Okay, well, I guess the, the narrow question is, uh, should the payroll tax cut be extended or not? And, you know, to me, you know, the evidence of uh, tax increases causing severe problems in a, an economy that's either slow growing or in recession is pretty voluminous. Japan had that experience and so forth. So uh, that uh, combined with my strong belief that you need to starve the beast anyway suggests to me that you would want to extend the payroll tax cut for the moment or however long Social Security uh, is in place. Uh, so I think that that would be my that's where I come down on that on that narrow issue as far as Social Security is concerned um, I think you have to consider what's practicable uh, when the history books are written about the Obama presidency and its various failures I think the first thing they're going to point to is the fact that instead of embracing some of the reforms uh, suggested by Erskine Bowles and uh, as I've mentioned before Paul Ryan has made similar suggestions about reforming you know the, the ever-growing cost of entitlements associated with Social Security and Medicare and so forth uh, the, the fact of, that, that Obama did not embrace that instead created this uh, Obamacare monster, which is cause it, not only extending benefits, but will actually in the end cause the cost to rise even higher, because as you rightly point out, any centralized control of a system that big is going to inevitably in, be inefficient. Uh, and again, we there are numerous examples of that in history. Uh, my own view is that we're in a situation right now where these very rather small issues like extending the payroll tax are being a, a, attacked in a piecemeal basis and okay so let, let's put that fire out uh, you know that comes down to a, a vote or two in, in Congress but the fact that we haven't addressed the central I issue which is a combination of 
holistic tax reform, right, in which you can actually, and the calculations are very clear on this, lower overall tax rates and eliminate uh, loopholes at the same time, and combine that with controlling the cost overruns that are going to swallow the economy if they continue in the current fashion. I mean, this is the issue that should be addressed, and it's what we should be talking about as a country. Okay. Chris, well, can I, can I uh, jump in here? Go right can, ahead, please. If we're going to have a moronic boondoggle government program that the, both the party of greed and the party of envy want to perpetuate, which is Social Security, we should probably start paying for it ourselves. There's n never been a more selfish generation than the baby boomers. And if they want to have this program that did so well with their parents, if they want to continue it, maybe they should start paying for it themselves, which continues perhaps raising the payroll tax, removing the cap from the payroll tax. Because to keep piling on the debt and just imagining, well, if we cut, it'll burp, uh, boost the economy, uh, is just maddening for those of us out here who are concerned that we've already incurred too much debt. This is going to make the situation worse. And just the immorality of this is like you go to a restaurant, you charge up a big meal, and then you walk up to the maitre d' and say, my grandkids will be around in 20 years. Let them pay for my meal. It's just repulsive that this, this, this continues. And Mitt Romney to stand up there and say, I won't touch the security. Well, somebody better touch it. Yeah, it's a third rail. Somebody better touch it because it's going to drag us down and kill us. So, we, we, you know, but we have other morons like, I, I don't know if anybody saw this, Ari Fleischer, calling Obama's payroll tax bluff. He says, and what Rick was talking about, the tax code needs to be thrown out and replaced with a system that fosters economic growth. Tax codes don't foster economic growth. They impede economic growth by definition. This moron who is now a, a parasite with his own communications firm, because that's what politicians do. They come out of government and then become parasites back on the government and make more money. He thinks there's a tax code that's going to foster economic growth. I'll tell you what fosters economic growth. Entrepreneurialism, the free flows of capital, not tax codes. So we can either start paying, you know, the, 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 the baby boom generation is going to be the first generation to hand off the country in worse shape. First generation ever to hand off the country in worse shape than what it inherited, and that's offensive. And they can, you know, go to their graves uh, with a big smile on their face for screwing future generations. You want your Social Security? Start paying for it today. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, and uh, well said, uh, Rick. Any any comment to that? I didn't say it. I shouted it. <laughs> well, uh, let me let me talk at a personal level. Uh, I've arranged my personal finances on the assumption that I won't get any Social Security because, I mean, it's clear, the, the system is bust, right? Uh, so unless it's, you know, vastly reformed and fundamentally reformed or eliminated, uh, it's not going to be able to pay out the funds that it's promising today. And that's just a fact, all right? You don't need to be, a, you know, a, a mathematical genius to figure that out. So the numbers don't add up, and therefore, as you know, a kind of rational, sensible citizen, I've arranged my life accordingly. Let me ask you guys: Should we have the deduction, keep it in place, and it goes into uh, private, like private accounts, such as a four hundred one k for the individual and not to the government, but it automatically is deposited into uh, uh, an individually owned uh, account? But the but the process by which uh, the payroll tax does that is kept in place in order to uh, enhance the, uh, the, 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 the coercion of an individual to save for what the would, future. Chris, what, 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 what do you think about that? What do we need the that? government getting involved for? What, what do we need the government doing, getting any hand in that uh, when we can just, you can just do it yourself? Nobody's stopping you today from taking part of your paycheck and sticking it in a savings account. There are 401k accounts that the government doesn't have a hand in. It just was gracious enough to let us accru accrue this money tax-free. But you, you want the government's hand in this because, you know, once the hand's in, then it starts taking. And suddenly, you know, if we, they set up these private accounts, there will be a $100 a year fee, which will then go to $500 a year, which will then go to 3% of assets on top of it. Before you know, it's just going to be another government revenue program uh, to pay for drones to bomb people in countries that, you know, pose a threat to our foreign allies. Is it not helpful to uh, have people to help them save for the future by forcing pure them Pure paternalism. To pay? That's pure paternalism. Shall we also tell people, uh, you know, they have to wear seatbelts, that they can't smoke? People have to be responsible for their actions, Chris. And when you set up systems like this, what happens to the guy who, you know, well, he didn't want to take part in the government program. We're going to put him in jail? I mean, it's, 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 you don't save for your retirement. 
That's your problem. See, that's the problem with Social Security. What it did was it broke the inter intergenerational bonds between children, parents, and grandparents. It used to be that, you know, when your grandparents had no more money or your parents had no more money, you gave them money. Today you just say, you know what, get out of the Social Security office. I don't want to hear about it. We're off to Disneyland. Can't be bothered. Um, is that the uh, social uh, 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 problems that you referred to in uh, in your opening? Yeah, that's remarks? that's one of them. That's one of them. The, the intergenerational destruction of the family. It's it's just a minor one. But you know, now, now that now that we're expanding our definition of what a family is through marriage uh, between any two or three or four consenting whatevers, um, maybe that will be resolved. <laughs> okay. Or, okay, or well, non-consenting. I, I, there's, there's probably non-consensual marriage now. I, I haven't read the paper in the last twenty minutes. Um, well, I, I, uh, I, I generally agree with uh, your, um, uh, your thought to kill paternalism. Uh, and uh, so, but I'm interested in hearing more of, uh, of the other uh, social problems that perhaps uh, uh, Social Security causes. Uh, in, uh, uh, and uh, so if you, uh, if you would like to continue on that line, go right ahead. Uh, if you have I'm hugging, I want, I want, Rick's got to chime in. I'm hugging the whole show. I can't. Okay. Wait, well, look, all right. Well, well, look. Uh, well, let me and let me uh, expand a little bit on, on, on Mark's comment. Again, drawing on personal experience, uh, it's occurred to me that the, the numbers are well known. The, when the government redistrib redistributes wealth, which is its primary function today uh, in its current form, that wasn't the original intent of the founders, but that's what it's become. It's known to be one of the most inefficient means of doing so. Whereas, consider a church or the Rotary Society or any of these other fraternal organizations or religious or organizations of which de Tocqueville wrote, for example. They're actually, in many cases, extremely efficient. And the reason is they're run by volunteers. They're largely run by volunteers. We at our church, for example, support, not entirely, but partially support a family, a family that would otherwise be homeless in this community. Now, this is 90% done by volunteer activity. There's no government involved. Money doesn't get stolen because I'm head of the finance committee and I know where the money is. Uh, but these these methods of attacking the same problems that Social Security were meant to attack don't really get much attention in the media. But they are out there, and they are, in fact, very effective. Okay. Uh, Chris, can, can I just echo that? Uh, yeah, Tocqueville was talking about society's little platoons, and uh, it brings it back to when things are not done on a human scale, which is the scale that Rick's church is doing it on, they're doing it on a human scale where they have contact with the recipient. When things are not done on a human scale, when they're done on a gargantuan scale, that's when the connection between uh, obligation on part of the payee and, and obligation to behave on part of the recipient is completely broken. So I would bet you, I don't know this, uh, I would bet you that if the recipients, this, this family that Rick's church supports, I would bet you that if they rolled into church next week in a brand new Ferrari and talked about their new six-foot TV screen, everybody in the church would say, you know what, we're supporting the wrong family. It's turned into just com a complete indulgence. But when, when the recipient is a billionaire in Boca Raton who's using his monthly payments to pay for his blue light special dinner, uh, and that money's coming from, you know, a 25-year-old widow who has three kids who's trying to support, who's, her, she's paying through the payroll tax, gets lost. it gets lost in the ethers. You know, there's, there's no connection because there's no little platoon mediating those two parties. There's just this gargantuan behemoth government that can't do anything right and actually does a lot of harm. So it even goes back further than Tocqueville. It goes back to uh, the Greek notion of a republic where, uh, amongst other things, the Greeks said that a republic can only be big enough, should, should be no larger than the, the amount of distance that, it, that a man can walk across in one day, which is about 40 miles, and should never in any case be larger than 250,000 people. So think about it. If you have a problem in your town, you call your mayor, you get a little response. You got a problem with uh, Afghani wedding, Afghanistani weddings being bombed by drones? Call your senator. Good luck. Step in line behind fifteen lobbyists. This bringing things down to human scale, which is what Rick's church is, which 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 is what Rick's church does, and which what a lot there are just millions of these organizations out there are doing are doing a great job. But but a lot of people can step back and say, not my problem. I'll let Social Security deal with it. So thank God for things like Rick's church. 
Okay, and uh, do you have any suggestion, guys, for uh, for the leader of uh, the, for the leaders in the uh, political establishment, such as Bonner for the uh, on the uh, House and uh, and uh, O'Connell and uh, and uh, Reed on the uh, the Senate? Any suggestions? Final suggestions? Uh, the, the Jamestown suicide mass motto is that is that an option? I, no, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> end, it, end it, don't mend it. How about growing a spine? How about standing up for what's right as opposed to what gets you reelected? These people are nauseating. Uh, this is the kind of stuff you know, just foments revolution. But we're 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 a complacent bunch. Uh, the American sheeple will have to be re pushed really far before we get violent about this. Rick, any final comments? Well, uh, it's hard to disagree with that assessment. I think, I think you know, even Reagan was a disappointment in terms of uh, his initial plan, which was to starve the beast. But I think to attack the problem, in other words, the size of government and the gross, grotesquely enlarged size of government most quickly, you really have to attack adopt uh, at the onset uh, the star of the beast mentality and just cut, 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 uh, because the bureaucracy um, has its own momentum. And I mean, this is all well documented. And in the example I cited before, you know, welfare was well known for only actually passing through 5 or 10 percent of the uh, monies it, it took in. It just gets destroyed by you know, bureaucratic uh, costs and, and, and inefficiency. So uh, the urgent task for the United States today is to starve the beast. That's absolutely right, and I agree with you. And, uh, and I think the, uh, the secret to uh, getting rid of inefficiency in government is to control the special interests. But that's all we have for, to, uh, for, the, uh, for the philosophical angle this week. And uh, we'll see you guys uh, uh, in the uh, next week. And thanks for joining us. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Thank you.